we going and welcome back to In The Shed. We have got an absolutely insane guest tonight. I am so looking forward to this. I, I say that every single week, but tonight is just, you know, this is our first football guest. This is our first big time football guest. And, and uh, I'm like, I, honestly, I can't contain my time. We're talking Socceroos, we're talking A-League, we're talking even, we're going to Belgium at some point. We're going to Belgium. So it's going to be very interesting. Let's first thing welcome our, uh, our, our co-host. Yeah, good, mate. Fangirling over this guest tonight. Really looking forward to this one. I think we're both going to have a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, guys, you're in for a good one. Exactly right. You know, uh, fangirl over here. I'm actually wearing a Chicago Cubs jumper and he's, uh, he's wearing a Chicago Bulls hat. So uh, we're, we're already kind of aligning here, but you've got your, some random crasher jumper on. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know. But, uh, let's, welcome in, well, let's welcome in our guest. Today in the shed, we're going to be welcoming on an Australian footballing legend who not only excelled at club level with Melbourne Victor in the A-League, also completed since in Belgium and the Netherlands. Not only this, but our guest also played 50, uh, played 50 caps for the Socceroos, scoring 28 goals in the process. Currently, he holds the all-time scoring record for goals in a, in a single international match, having hit 13 past American Samoa in a 31 nil flogging. Now, I just want to say, that's just, that's just wild. That's, we're going to get into that, because that, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's just that's, From Bathurst 75 to the incredible Socceroos in 2006, while winning three A-League titles in the process, Please join me in welcoming the famous Archie Thompson son. Welcome, Archie. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Yeah, I'll give you, give you a bit of a wrap there, mate. How are you, how you doing through all this? Um, yeah, pretty good. Um, you know, I still get the exercise, so that's a good thing for me. Uh, that helps me clear my mind. Uh, but uh, we're, we're, I'm kind of like everyone else, man, just waiting to see when everything gets back to normal um, with football, obviously, because, you know, my job is to... Um, commentate and uh, oh well, I like to call it commentate. I'm not sure other people really <laughs> do it, but uh, you know, um, and it's you know, with Fox and um, the A League, but uh, you know, hopefully things start to get rolling. And uh, I know that they're starting to be a li- little bit more lenient when it comes to um, you know what we're allowed to do. And obviously in Victoria, it's it's still a bit bit tough with lockdowns but um we're getting there and i'm sweet i'm happy are you still t- keeping in touch with the uh, melbourne victories <coughs> club at the moment oh no they suck <laughs> <laughs> no, no 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 look man i i don't um uh you know i was an ambassador for melbourne victory for a, two, a year or two, almost two years after um i finished so i was quite involved with the club still but i just felt like um I got offered another ambassador role. I started doing that. And, yeah, um, taking a step back. Yeah, but then I, I felt like, too, that um, it was still restricting me to kind of find out what I wanted to do and who I am because I don't want to be just associated with, like, a Melbourne victory or, or yeah. even football. I kind of, you know, I mean, that's always going to be a massive part of me and it's something that has been most of my life. But um, besides that, I still want to it's find more out. Than just, uh, more than yeah. football. Exactly, and what I like, and um, you know, I, I have other passions besides football. But look, uh, I still, uh, in this probably little period of isolation, I've actually really uh, um, probably had uh, epiphany in a way that I, I still want to be involved with football. I, I still want to coach uh, at some level. Um, I'll be doing some stuff uh, with uh, a company called. Um, I should probably know that because I'm going to be doing some shit for them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Superstar Academy, which is, um, they focus on all different sports, but obviously their main one's football. So I'll be looking to do some shit with them. And man, I'm just, um, yeah, looking forward to finding my own way. I mean, look, I'm always going to be no victory um, yeah. because uh, I've had 11 years there and, uh, and some six successful ones, a lot of friends. Highs and lows, championships, and um, so that's always going to be a massive part of my uh, my life. I saw that you actually still uh, you're still cracking on, mate. I, I saw Essendon and Royals. Like obviously you, yeah. you you can't do it now, but are you still uh, you still kicking on in the old football as well? I was funny enough. I've been playing grassroots football ever since I stopped A League. I, I had a little stint here in Melbourne. Uh, I played for a team back home, um, where I grew up, over at Dongle, which is on the border of uh, New South Wales and Victoria, which is three hours from Melbourne. So I actually was going back and forth because I played here in Melbourne. But mum and dad's still there, so that's the reason why I went there. But fuck, it was too hard. I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> man. I mean, it's hard enough for me um, um, walking. And, and imagine, you know, traveling, traveling three hours and trying to get out of the car and kick a football. Uh, it, was tough, <laughs> but, uh, it was tough. But 
I, I managed to sign up with Essendon Rules, a couple of old mates of mine that I play with um, that are in, in the old A-League and they, they rang me up and said, you know, why don't you have a kick? Um, yeah. Because I was, I put it out there that I want to at least go one more year uh, competitively before I go to State 3 with a mate of mine uh, yeah. or my girlfriend's cousin who's pestering me about joining them. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it one more decent uh, go. I just, I just want to say, mate, I'm in, uh, I'm in PG right now and uh, our football league's not exactly fantastic, but I believe we, we will definitely have Where you. Where I'm in PG, yeah. mate. I'm in, oh, I'm in PG. PG, man. I love PG. Yeah. I, I used to go, I go holiday. Used to go holidaying there with my family yeah. <laughs> uh, to Plantation Island all the time. Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, so I'm with, uh, with the yeah. fan, but uh, we would definitely yeah. have you at Nandy Football Club. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. Exactly. Um, but I want to uh, I want to ask you as well. You know, you you, you do uh, you did say kind of that you you are still actively involved with uh, with football, and you but you, you are taking a step back. Do you mm. feel like if, if say a big club called you nowadays, you would go back, or you think that that's done? I'll go back as in like. Uh, like do you I'm, feel I'm like you'd go up to a like a like the big time professional leagues again? If they gave you coaching, football. coaching or playing? Playing. Oh, playing no chance. <laughs> I'm struggling to keep my own spot in state one. No, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I thought they were excited to cut. Uh, they were obviously excited to have me there because a lot of the youngsters grew up uh, watching me and, and were oh, a fan well, of Melbourne yeah. Victory. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, so they were expecting some really exciting stuff when I came out and onto the training pitch. Now, like, they're going, what's happening to this bloke? He's a mess. <laughs> 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 How can we get him off our roster? But, uh, look, uh, no, no, I did go to Spain. I did go to Spain. Um, uh, Real Murcia, wasn't it? Yeah, Re- Re- Real Murcia. And uh, they actually got promoted, so... The, the the game the one and a half game that I played really contributed for them to go up. Uh, so we we went up. They went up, and they, they actually asked me to possibly go back again. So oh wow, uh, okay, that's I don't know. cool. Uh, yeah, but just to, it's it's more to kind of create pathway from here to there uh, yeah. for, for um, young players, and also too it's a it's a uh, it's got a university for some of, some of those ones that want to actually go over there, give it a go professionally, but still also study, which a couple of young Australians are over there doing at the moment. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, it, that'd be an awesome place to go as well. Spain must be an incredible place to, to oh, be a part of. Well, man, I was uh, 16, 17, and uh, when I, you know, obviously got really serious about my football, and Spain was always a place that I wanted to go play because technically it was perfect for me. Uh, not not with the physicality, but more more football smarts and, and skill just uh, would have uh, been perfect for me. And unfortunately, I didn't get to do it back then. But yeah, lo and behold, turned 40 years old. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to Spain. And it's funny, uh, going to the game, I was actually having a few beers before, <laughs> before the, my, my first match. Uh, but yeah, it was a great experience. I took my boy with me. Back so to the old days, mate. Back to the old days of a few beers before the game. Oh, oh yeah, hundred percent, man. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> I love it. You just said basically you, you you originally always wanted to to go to Spain, but you know mm. we, we'll we'll start off where you were at Bathurst. It was Bathurst '75 where your original career started. Yeah. Yeah, Bathurst '75. Um, uh, to be to be fair, it was uh, I kind of took a, a year off football because I would, uh, I was probably. You know, I was, soccer was taking up a lot of my time, especially when you should have been head down, really concentrating on football. I just wanted to hang out with mates. So I gave football uh, away for a year and um, it just happened that a, a, an old coach of mine was like, uh, Man, Archie, come back and get fit and play some football. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, sweet, no worries. Then it happened that, um, you know, I was at 75s, um, got back into it. And then, you know, when, when things start to flow and, and you really want something hard enough, Things start to get put into your into your pathway, and uh, I thought that I missed the boat. But then, obviously, um, opportunity happened that I went to uh, Morwell Falcons uh, in the NSL, and pretty much that's where it all started. When you speak about having that year off, was there a moment where you s- kind of doubted yourself and and you overcome that doubt, or what was the reason behind it mostly? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I um. I actually uh, w- ended up was working in a in a Chinese restaurant as a kitchen hand, and um, and growing up, I, I played with Brett Hamilton, Harry Kill, all these players in the academy teams in, in Sydney. So I tr- I travelled for Bathurst to um, Sydney and and play with these guys, and you know I was at their level, and 
but my interest wasn't really um, my my passion and drive wasn't at their level, which they were really wanted to be pro footballers. I didn't, and uh, yeah. and so I, I sort of took it off. But then I happened to be working at a Chinese restaurant, and Harry Kuehl was on the TV um, when I was cutting onions, and uh, <laughs> he he, uh, he had just signed a, a contract. I think it was about one hundred and twenty thousand Australian dollars. Um, yeah, wow. A week. A week. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, a week. Something ridiculous like that, and I was like. Man, I'm yeah, lucky to be scraping 120 bucks a week. Yeah. So I was like, man, I want to, I want to get back to this. I want to get, want to get, we want to get some of that paper. You know what I mean? Bring and me then, the uh, money. Bring me the yeah, money. Yeah. Yeah, of course, mate. But then, uh, obviously, uh, I, I had a year off, so I wasn't in any shape. You know, going out and drinking and whatever with mates. Um, and uh, so, I. I had to knuckle down and it was that I had to start from running from the Chinese restaurant to home, which was about four and a half Ks. And man, I stopped like 30 times coughing up lung, heart, everything. Cause I'm just, you know, I was just out of shape. But um, when you talk about something about doubt and that, I, I kept pushing through. And when I finally got from the Chinese restaurant to, to home in one run, I, I kind of knew that, I know it was only a small step, but I knew that, um, I could do anything that I want and I always had the ability it was just about obviously um, having discipline along with that and uh, because I've seen so many players over t- over my time have so much ability yeah. but just uh, just reliant on that and not really willing to put in the extras and uh, that's, ha- that's how I, I kind of got to where I needed to be by having the ability and doing the extras and I, I pretty much did that throughout my whole career I mean look there's probably things that I, I wish I could have done a little bit better I've been a bit more professional in certain um, situations but you know I'm still grateful for the career that I've had but those little moments that I had knowing that I had to get back helped me obviously um, with my mindset and, and, and on to achieve uh, football or whatever I needed to do it, that kind of held me in good stead. That's really good. That, you know, like for all the, the young listeners out there, that's really motivating. Uh, and it, it, it's really good that you said that because uh, there are people who, who do feel that way. And uh, the mm. fact of the matter is, is that if you, you, you prove to yourself that you can do it, if you just get past this small hurdle, even though it's a small yeah. hurdle, if you think about it like that, it's, it, it's still a big hurdle in your life. So uh, as long as you can get past that small hurdle, which in reality is a big hurdle, you can achieve anything. And, and we've seen you obviously go on have a, have a fantastic career. And mm. uh, I, I want to ask you, you you were playing for those NFL teams. You, 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 you had these kind of, um, you had these difficulties, and then you, you moved to a big time a club in Belgium. I, I believe are they, is Lier still around? By the way, I think Lier. Yeah, yeah, Lier. So yeah, I think I think they're in still um, Jupiter League, which is a top league. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't really follow them uh, <laughs> <laughs> now. Um, but yeah, look, I, I was fortunate enough that uh, I got an opportunity to go to. Um, Belgium, and uh, and I was kind of lucky too because I actually went to Belgium um, to to a trial with Anderlecht straight after I oh, uh, wow. played okay. in the Con- Confederation Cup with Australia. Um, yep. I flew directly to um, to Belgium to play a game with Anderlecht because I yep. had trained with them. Uh, I had trained with them a couple of months beforehand in a trial, and they were really impressed with me. But I couldn't play a game because I ended up getting sick. And uh, funny enough, the reason that I got sick was that I, <laughs> that I went out with my sister and her brother that were over in Belgium. I got shit based on I got shit based on Bacardi and yeah. uh, Bacardi and Coke. And over in Belgium, mate, they don't pour pour them small. Yeah, they they're uh, they're wild ones over there, right? And and I had snails too. I ate snails because when you're in Brussels, or you eat snails, so yeah. that combination wasn't great. The next day I was crook, and so I missed. <laughs> I missed the trial game, but I, I ended yeah. up just saying I got a bit of food poisoning. So then I, they actually <laughs> threw me back after, and that's probably not good for our young listeners. Listeners, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, the, remember the, the, the motivating part before. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah no. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so then I, uh, well, I am human still. I am human, yeah, but well, I, yeah, I, yeah. I ended up flying back again because they wanted to trial me again, and. Um, because it was such a long flight from Confederation Cup, we played in Japan to Europe. Literally stepped off a plane and went and and, tr- and played a game of this the underlet youth team. And at the time, they had company and all those guys that were that, that were playing for them. And um, 
So I, I played the game. I was shit out, but you know, I was still quick. But I just was, you know, I was just hopeless. And then, uh, but then it happened that a coach was watching um, that was uh, part of Lisa, and he just said, "Look." Went and had a meeting the next day, and they said, "Yeah, we want to sign you for four years." And I'm like, "Bang, okay, sweet, I'm there." All right, and, and, there. <laughs> and, and that's how it, and that's how that happened. And uh, you know, it's it's funny. It's um, you still got to have a lot of luck in this yeah. game, just as much as ability and, and discipline. But luck um, sometimes plays a big key in it. And uh, again, I'm I'm pretty grateful and fortunate. Things have just fallen into a place for me. Did you when you with uh, Leo to that was obviously a, a huge. It, 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 I'm trying to pronounce it, Leo shirt. Leo, 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 Leo. When you yeah, when you Lisa. played with them, what was the feeling like coming from the NFL and playing for such a huge, uh, like Belgium? Obviously, love their football. Australian, mm. it's a little bit debatable whether they love their football. Like a lot do, but there is also yeah. that population that are like NRL and AFL. But you went to Belgium mm. and played in the first division. That one must have been pretty incredible. Yeah, it was a different. Um... It's a it's a different level, different mentality. Players are coming from all over the world, trying to uh, establish themselves in Europe. And at that time, Belgium was a was a tough league and a good league for for scouts and people to watch to go yeah. on to bigger bigger um, leagues and bigger clubs. So that was my ambition to do do that when I went to Lierse. Um But you know, it's a different mentality. I, I'm it's uh, it actually opened my eyes because here in Australia. Um, you play if you don't if you don't win, it's okay. Uh, we've got next week. That that's kind of we're pretty yeah. cruisy like that, um, and I'm pretty cruisy like that. I still am a little bit, but I think going there, um, knowing that all these like I said, all these other players are coming from other countries, Africa, really poor countries, and yeah. uh, and and this is their opportunity to um, have a lifetime, yeah, have a life, uh, yeah, give exactly. money to the family. I mean. Um, and so it, it, it was tough. Every time he stepped onto the pitch, it was like, uh, like war. I mean, we're friends after, but every, every single session was tough. Yeah. And, uh, and, that, and that's what kind of opened my eyes to, to being in Europe. And, um, and, but it was a great experience. I loved it. And uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you, if you remember a player named Aruna Kone. He, yeah, he played yeah. for, yeah, and was, this is a funny little story. He, so he, he, was, uh, uh, he played at PSV. He went on to, um, I think, Wigan in the Premier League. Uh, yeah. He was at, he was brought over to Lierse with another player that was supposed to be the talented player. And, uh, wow, and okay. this is yeah, <laughs> so, but this is this is what I'm talking about. Someone kind of um, relying on their talent and, and and not really putting in the hard work. And this is someone that's the kind of uh, yeah. And he he comes over and he works harder than the other bloke that came over and. Um, he goes to PSV, he goes to R- Rota, then goes to PSV, plays champions, wins, wins championships uh, with that, and then goes over to Wigan and, and goes on and plays in the, with the Ivory Coast national team. I think yeah, he even well, won an African Nations Cup. I think so, yeah, with Yaya Toure and Kola Toure yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that, those are, like, those are maybe things that kids can aspire to. It's uh, like, you know, if they do work a little bit extra or harder than the one next to them that supposedly has the talent and doesn't want to do the extras, and th- that's what can happen. Whilst yeah. we're speaking about the international level of football, is it different comparing your, your international and your club, obviously? I want to ask, in regards to the style of play or the tactics, is it a completely different environment or are you still stepping on the field and playing the exact same football you would at Melbourne Victory compared to Australia? Yeah, look, I, I actually think um, playing at international level, um, you, it's probably not as detailed um, as what you would do with a with a your, your domestic league or domestic team because um, you've got all week to really work on um, your team uh, for the next week, and you're kind of familiar with with each team. So, but you're still working on it um, all week with national yeah. teams you sometimes only have two or three days to prepare. So it's almost like really basic kind of instructions about, you know, what you should do and where you should go and who, what's our sort of um, tactics going forward. But in saying that, you've got the best in the, in, 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 in the country playing, you know, playing. Um, so you don't really need too much information or tactics uh, to kind of put over to these players because... Uh, you know, they've, um, they're playing at the top level 
in, in, yeah. in, in their league. So, I mean, look, probably preparation tactically is not as uh, probably as, as stringent as what you get at, at uh, your local football. I mean, but domestic football, but yeah, that that's probably the difference between international and um, you know domestic league. Now, now we're gonna we're gonna get further into Socceroos and, and Australia in a few moments, and uh, I de- there is definitely one specific moment that I, I want to personally ask you about, but we will get to that in a moment. Uh, but I want to ask you about your move back to Melbourne Victory because what interests me, right, is that like I said, Belgium first division, big club. Uh, everyone in Belgium loves their football. You go back to Australia, where the A-League had just started, a victory had just started, and it's in a country that is dominated by the NRL and the AFL. I get it home, but what was the big, what was, what was the big deciding factor for you coming back and, and starting out in the league? Well, I think because I was, I was four years at uh, Belgium, and funny enough, I um, had one of my better seasons uh, in my fourth year where, when I was, you know, top goal scorer, and I'm not far off uh, the league's top score, goal scorers. But um, uh, my ex-partner was pregnant at, the, uh, at that time with yep. our second child and it was hard enough already being in Europe away from family when you're bringing up a child and these are different things that you have to take into consideration that, that um, people don't kind of realise too is when you go over it's not sometimes football decisions that are made it's it's personal and family reasons and so when Ernie Merrick rang me and said to me look um, there's a great a competition that we're trying to put together uh, it's, it's there's a lot more money involved in professional sense um, with a setup, and um, and this is a really big opportunity for you to come back and and really uh, help grow the game in Australia. And I kind of felt like, well, my ex is pregnant. It's, um, this will be our second child. It'll be tough over there. It's tough with one. It's going to be even tough with two. So I took a gamble. I thought, you know what, it's going to be uh, a step backwards because you know I had four years and I, I got my foot into the door, and you know I started to get used to the culture and, and the football. Um, they wanted to sign me again, but I just felt like it was time to kind of go back. And man, two steps, one step back ended up being 20 steps forward because exactly. uh, man, I don't think that uh, if I stayed over in Europe that I'd probably have the profile that I have now here in Australian football. And I, I feel like that a lot of players that had probably been more successful over in Europe and with the national team um, still probably don't have... Was there ever a chance you could have gone to Spain or England or anything like that? Well, no, it was it was because of visa issues and um, okay. those, yep. those sort of things, and you have to play a certain amount of games for the Socceroos. And at that time, it was hard because Frank Farina and all those guys were involved, and they always kept picking the same players. So it was so hard to, to kind of crack that um, that team. But um, like I was saying, it, it, it was tough. But again, I came back and. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of players have had more successful careers than with Socceroos, but they, most people that don't aren't familiar with football in Australia have, have got to watch me week in, week out yeah, exactly, and watch football yeah. here. And, like, it's like, well, I'm, I'm sort of a household name because of it, um, uh, without without the ego attached to it. But yeah. it's, 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 <laughs> it's, still, um, uh, it's still amazing. Like, I, I still um, get stopped there. Anywhere I kind of go, uh, even in other uh, other states and other cities, and that's really cool, man. I'm really great that I've had that impact on Australian football. Exactly right, man. Your name is, and I know we said this before that you want to kind of also have that name outside of sport, but your name is synonymous with Melbourne Victory and also Australia. You played a long time with Australia, and and we had some successful periods throughout that time as well. One of the most successful in 2006. Well, I mean, well, it was a tough period, man, for myself because when I look at that era that I came into, man, that's a golden generation, and uh, it was it was such a hard team to break into. And uh, you, you, with me, it was almost just like well, I was grateful to be part of the squad. I felt like um, I felt like maybe if I had been born ten years later. Uh, that yeah. I would have probably had more more impact or uh, more, um, I don't know, time, I suppose, playing with the Australian team and playing more football. But, you know what, I'm grateful that I've, I've, I've had the success I've had and teams that I've played with with the national team. I mean, uh, you know, going to the World Cup in 2006, all those qualifications, um, you know, it was pretty amazing. Like, when we qualified for in 2005, 
um, oh, everything, e e everything <laughs> every sort of qualifier after that doesn't sort of have that kind of buzz. As, as I know that feeling, it, mate. I know that feeling. Even as a fan, like, <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was amazing. And, and like, it's like that Kathy Freeman run in 2000 when she won the gold medal. It's like, it, that's what that you moment's it. like. Everyone remembers where they were when they were watching that game when we, when we beat Uruguay. Um, so, and then also too, when I'm playing Melbourne Victory and, and we, we win our first championship, um, I, I, you know, scored a few goals, but then playing in front of 60,000 people, uh, domestic competition, like never seen really before in a long time. And again, I was a part of it. So, um, I'm pretty, pretty lucky, man. Pretty lucky. And while you touch on that 2007 grand final, you surely did show Adelaide United who's boss, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> well, man, look, to be honest, this is probably the first time that I've actually said this, but um, maybe a couple might have been a bit suspect for the loss side. The truth here, the truth yeah, here, everyone. Definitely, definitely my fourth. I reckon um, it was a, uh, it was a bit touch and go, but yeah, a bit debatable. But man, when you're three 0 down, a man down. Um, you know, you're never going to have any. You're not going to have much luck, and unfortunately, Adelaide didn't. But uh, you know, that was unbelievable night, man. A massive crowd, and um, that's what kind of everyone remembers. It was, was an incredible night. Was that a club career highlight? While we've spoken a bit about the international and the club, was that one of the club career highlights for you? Oh, yeah, without doubt. But then there's one moment that I talk about that when I went to grassroots football, playing with uh, Murray United which play MPL 3, I was MPL 2 at the time. Um, I, w I was playing a game in Myrtleford, which is like this tiny little town, man. It was probably about 50 people, 60 people. <laughs> and uh, I don't know when you see me when I score, but like I, I, I uh, kind of dry hump the corner flag. Yeah, dry hump and, the corner uh, flag, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I scored my first goal with Murray and uh, I ran over to the corner flag and my mum's sitting literally three metres away from the corner flag. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I'm just pointing at mum going, yeah, and I start to lose like, and, and, and her mum's like that. And then uh, and everyone's kind of thinking, man, this is pretty awkward. But uh, I, as I was running back to the halfway line, um, after the game, my sister had said to me, Archie, did you see what mum did? I'm like, why? What did she do? So when I celebrated, I knocked the flag down. I didn't realise. And as I was running back, my mum, who's yay height, little PNG woman, Picks up the flag, puts it in. She starts drawing up to the corner. <laughs> that's <laughs> such a typical <laughs> island thing to do. I just love it. Yeah, I love man, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, well, that's where I kind of I feel like I get my. Uh, well, it's definitely where I get my like. Uh, I I think probably uh, smile and my character and that sort of um, you know don't don't try to take things too serious, but always try to have a smile and a laugh. I, I yep. feel like I get that from mum, and you know when she did that, and people told me. For me, that that was probably one of the biggest highlights for me because I've I, I played in in front of big crowds and stuff. But when you have mum and dad or there, it's hard to kind of really see where they're at or how they're feeling. But when, but when you're, they're right there and, you, and and they get and you get to go over and give them a hug when you score, man, it's pretty mad. That's what I love. Well, you can go over and that was give a highlight. Them a hug when you score. You can go over and give them a hug when you score, or you can dry hump the flag and point at them at the same time. Yeah, That's, uh... yeah. <laughs> And your mum too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly right. That's actually, that's fantastic that you, you say that about, like how, it, it, it's crazy that you have such a big highlight, you know, big, huge result against Adelaide United. Uh, you know, you have your huge results in Socceroos, and yet you still remember such a, you know, a unique moment in a in an NFL game, or even, yeah, like a ridiculously low level. Yeah, you still yeah. remember that. Like it, it, oh, it's mate, that, that was amazing. But again, probably one of the biggest... Highlights for me too was, uh, you know, back then you used to obviously when you played well, you'd have a big um, highlight in the newspaper, you know, back page photos, all this sort of stuff. But I used to play golf on a Sunday and uh, I used to play pennant and uh, or competition. Who's that? I saw some of, uh, is that your mum walking past it? That's me, <laughs> 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 We're going another streaker. We're going to streak on the field. <laughs> hey, no, no, <laughs> hey, don't be dry up on any flags oh, no. in front of Nan. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> So then I, um, but then I actually won the competition that yep. day and uh, on the Sunday and on the Monday they had this little snippet, um, Archie Thompson winning uh, grade uh, B grade, 
and I was wrapped like I was over the moon. Yeah. So that that was like a highlight for me. It's it, but look, obviously going to World Cup, uh, scoring thirteen goals or whatever it is, uh, you know. That's ridiculous, mate. That's ridiculous. Yeah, Quali- yeah. qualifying. Uh, there are still amazing moments. Yeah, still yeah. amazing. Well, moments. I, I want to ask you while we got you about the, the uh, American Samoa game. Obviously, uh, we won that game 31-0. People forget about the result the week before where we won 20, 22 nil against Tonga. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was going through your minds at the time when you, when you played American Samoa? You won 31 nil, but you scored 13. Was there ever a point where you're like, okay, guys, uh, it's time we, we slow down a bit or was it like you know what we're going to go for the jugular and we're going to make sure they know who it is <laughs> you know it's funny because it, it, it happened to be the 19th year anniversary just recently uh, of that match and uh, your next year post, yeah. Yeah, yeah next year's going to be 20 years and I actually feel like I should do something about it or at least go over there because I've not really spoken to anyone or any player from that particular game but there is a uh, documentary Next goal wins that they did on that team because they were the worst ranked <laughs> team in the world, and they tried. Yeah. They did this documentary, and it's pretty mad. Everyone should check it out. Um, so, but man, for me, because that was a team that was going to pl- be playing, uh, I think Uruguay uh, in the next few months. Um, so for me, it was I, I needed to to uh, regardless of the competition, I, I wanted to showcase what I could do, you know. Um, obviously, yeah. competition would have been a lot tougher as you get closer to qualifying for a World Cup. But I don't care if we're scoring so many. I, I, I just want to keep going because I don't know when this next opportunity for me to play for a Socceroo team or go to a World Cup will be. So that, that's, yeah, right. that's why that was. That's why it was 31 nil. But, man, that was shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they were shit. But, you know, bless them. They, I think when, just recently I only found out that um, a few of them were suspended that were meant to come over. Uh, they had to field the uh, under 19s team. So, man, there's a lot, there's uh, I think a lot there's of factors. excuses coming here. I think, nah, I think there's a few excuses coming here for them. But, you know, we're yeah. all out with it. We're all out yeah. with it. 31 okay. nil, pretty, pretty brutal effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is tough, yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Now, I want to, uh, now we're going to speak a bit more about the stock cruise here. We're going uh, mm. to go into... After the Uruguay game, and by the way, when we were speaking about Uruguay just then, I had shivers down my spine. Like, that was one of the best moments in, in Australian oh, sporting mate, history. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. Like, what, what, actually, yeah. go, through, go through Uruguay game. What was the, what was the feeling throughout the season well, Uruguay game? Well, well, for me, man, it was pretty amazing because we got who's uh, hitting, who it came in, um, the hitting, uh, told everyone, clean slate. I don't care who you are or what you've done in, in Australian football. Uh, to me, you're just... Uh, new players wanting to show me what you can do. So immediately everyone's like, okay, it's, it's game on. And a lot of those players that were almost guaranteed spots weren't guaranteed. So yeah. um, that was great for me. And straight away, he, he liked my qualities. Um, and uh, it was funny, first game, we, we, we were doing all the preparation and, you know, we go up to the team meeting up the box, uh, up the top floor and, um, they announced the team that will be starting uh, in, in Uruguay. And I see my name there. And <laughs> I tell you what, the bloody jaw just about dropped. And I, can't, I felt like everyone else was kind of going, what the hell's yeah. going on? <laughs> but, but, but for me, it was like, wow, this is incredible there. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. And then, you know, obviously stepping out onto the pitch at Mont- Montevideo. Oh, man, there's, I don't think for me there's been any more intimidating place to go and play. Listening yeah. to the Australian anthem, just booing, um, you could actually feel the the, the ground vibrating, and, and um, it, which crazy, was man. yeah, it's insane, man. But then, you know, obviously we 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 didn't we Not lost one nil, but we lost one nil. But you know, it was all about containing and then going back and then seeing what happens. And um, we had to ride our luck a, a little bit, but then you know we got some big name players, big game players, and. We turned it around, man, and when that penalty shootout, I was the first one to jump off the bench oh, and like mate. feline, feline to everyone. But man, it was just incredible. Um, like uh, just a celebration downstairs. John Travolta, yeah. um, you know. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, John Travolta. <laughs> John Travolta was there, and Dawn Fraser. And, yeah, man, it was just wow. amazing. Oh, amazing, amazing. When you when you speak about the coach and saying basically you're a nobody to me right now, show me your best. Did did you not to be? 
Oh, I don't, I don't want to push your ego too high, but you're a household <laughs> name, Martin. No, I'll yeah, admit it. You're a household no, name, and everyone can admit that. I'm now, I, I want to ask players like Zelko, Kalik, Tim Cahill that you're playing against. At that hey. moment, did you consider that they were going to be household names, or did you think that the coach was going to be proven right that these players really needed to put their effort in, including yourself, or did you always think you had this future? Um. Look, man, nothing's guaranteed, eh? I suppose in life, uh, especially in sport, man, because uh, you know it's um, you just don't know what's going to happen. And uh, so, I, I mean, sometimes it, it falls into place, and sometimes you've got to take your opportunity. And uh, I look at Timmy Kale, for instance, man, uh, when he came into um, you know that team in two thousand five. He was um, by Millwall, wasn't he? Yeah, Millwall, man, and he only went to Everton, I think on the back end or even just before the World Cup or just after the World Cup. But, you know, he comes on and, and um, scores the goals. And, man, the guy's just unbelievable for this national team. Like, and even for Everton for so long. Like, an absolute legend. And um, big spider, Kalach, uh, look, he, he was... He's, he's, a, he's a tough one to train with, to play with, because he's so bloody angry. And, and no, nothing's ever his fault. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, really lovely good man, champion guys. Look, the thing is that with national teams and with uh, with Socceroos, it's it's uh, it's like a, it's brothers, man. We we actually became brothers. It's not like yeah. we we weren't teammates. We're brothers, and that's that's what that that two thousand and five two thousand and six um, team was like. And then it it kind of almost rolls into every other Socceroo team after that but because I felt like that we we made it like that and um, and. Uh, yeah, it was pretty special, but no one's, no one knows what the future holds, man. It's yeah, just about. Well, what I want to ask, I want to, I want to ask uh, about a specific game, and obviously we played fantastic in that 2006 World Cup. You know, we were unbelievable. It was one of the, it was the best time in Australian football in history. Uh, yeah. It was fantastic. But I want to yeah. go and I want to ask you about what your thoughts and the team's thoughts were on Fabio Grossi. Oh yeah, but you know how the funny thing is, man. The funny thing is that we, it was a fantastic World Cup and whatever, but the fact is we actually drew one game, we won one game, and uh, lost two. So, I know, crazy. I, I, I know, yeah, actually. I, I don't know. For me, is, is that really an impressive World Cup? <laughs> I just, this is our first ever time in a World Cup. First time in a World Cup. I think, I think, that, Japan, yeah, I think so. that. I think that's what it is, and I think that it was um, probably... Yeah, okay, I'm probably a bit, bit, bit harsh. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh because I didn't get a run. <laughs> but but I, think, I think it actually was uh, maybe the football that we played or, or um, maybe people weren't expecting what we, were, what we did. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the team games that we lost, the teams were like probably going, wow, man, that, that was probably a really tough, that's a tough match. I thought that would have been a lot easier than you know, um, first of all, like what we first would have been thinking. Italy probably, you know, wouldn't have been thinking, shit, man, we've got a man down. We, we, we just got a penalty right at the end. It's a penalty. I mean, like, you know. If, I will, if I will a, say this. I will say this. I'm it was a striker, I'm going to go down too. Yeah, exactly. It was a ridiculous decision to dive in that situation. It was really lack of contact, but it was a ridiculous decision to go down yeah. in that situation. Well, I mean, it, it is... It is um, it's obviously things happen in split seconds and you, and you, a split second and you got to, in football, man, it's like decisions need to be made like within one or two seconds, man. And, uh, and it's tough. It's hard. It's, I mean, for me now, I'm in Fox Sports and I find it really hard to be critical and, and, uh, and I find that sometimes um, in, in the media, you have to have an opinion or that's what they have to say. You have to have the, an opinion. You have to be critical. And the thing is, man, I know... I, I haven't forgotten how hard it is to be in those positions, man. So I've got a, I know, for instance, uh, uh, Lucas Neal, I think it was that brought him down. He'd have that over again in a heartbeat. But it's it's not like from us as a players and as a team, we all know that things happen in a split second and uh, we can't go hard, can't be hard on someone like that. And um, so that's, unfortunately, that's, the, well, that's football, man. Basically, that's football. I guess it kind of also gives Australians an excuse to be like, we would have won that. And even though I don't personally believe we would have, I thought we played fantastic. I thought we played fantastic, but like we had a lot of really difficult tasks after that. And obviously, Italy ended up winning the whole thing. 
Um, but the, the thing is, is that it gives Australians also an excuse to be like, you know what, well, we were robbed and we would have gone on, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, uh, but I don't think we're like, we're not really like that. Our ears all used to kind of go, oh, you know, I don't um, think so either, but I think a lot of people dislike Italy because they game. They really do. Uh, yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, actually, to be fair, I think I have said that uh, we would have probably gone on to do something else. Uh, yeah. I, I probably have. yeah, I probably have. I probably have. Oh, yeah. you've, you've played with a lot of fantastic players throughout your career. Who were the, the best players, or, or even just who you played against as well? And and the World Cup that uh, I once talked about. Who were the best players? Uh, the best player you've played with and who were the best players you've played against? Jeez, man, I, I can't say because there's been so many. Uh, yeah. If I think of national team, like, you can't go past, like, Harry Kuehl, but then I, I, I love the way that Jason Kalina used to play. Kalina, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I used to love the way, like, he, man, watching him at training and, uh, look, he was an angry little bastard, but <laughs> what, he, his touches and passing were, I mean, okay, people will say, oh, he only goes left or right, but man, but he was always so sharp, man, so sharp, and a really amazing player to to, to watch. But then you know, Marco Bresciano is good. Um, even Brett Holman, man, electric man. When that guy's got the ball at his feet, and he's he's electric. Um, Harry Kuehl, he's just, he's just got an aura about him. Um, these guys, man, it's it's hard to pick who, who's great. When I think of Carlos Hernandez for for Melbourne victory. The guy I've never seen someone hit a ball like him in my life. Um, yeah. Maybe John John Markowski for, for my time at Carlton. His left foot was probably one of the sweetest left foots I've ever seen. Uh, Mario Smith, who was a guy in Belgium that went on to play in, in Anderlecht, a Romanian. Man, he was amazing, like to watch. So man, I, I can't really particularly uh, put it uh, like onto Those someone names who's amazing. That you've said, man. Like, yeah, as you go the names, Mark Paduka, like, Mark Paduka, man. Duke, uh, Mark Schwartz is the goalkeeper as well. Uh, Schwartz, man. Matty Ryan, unbelievable his feet. Uh, he's got an unbelievable rig too. Um, <laughs> then you've got, <laughs> then you've got, uh, you know, probably the best players I played against is Messi. Messi, when I played him at the Olympics. Wow. Um, you know, played at the Olympics against him, and he and you know, a friendly here in Australia when Argentina came here. Um, played Neymar when that six nil ass whipping that we got in Brazil before the World Cup in the, in Brazil, the guy was like he, he was smoking cigars. Like uh, <laughs> it just looked like he never got out of first gear. Um, but for me, how I kind of I sort of see someone um, as being something special is the way that they glide past people, especially because I'm a strike. You know, um, course, yeah. for me that I, I feel like it's there's someone that's makes things look really, really easy. And uh, there's no force to it. They just glide. I, I look at Marco Roas when I think of people here in Australia. Um, that guy is so silky to watch. Uh, yeah. Even uh, Milos Ninkovic is someone that's um, like watching a ballet dancer in, uh, I don't know, like a ballet dancer in, in Swan Lake. It's, it's, it's incredible, man. Yeah, so, right. there, there's, so many, there's so many quality players that I've played against and with, so I can't particularly put... One, you know, I can't. Now, now, Archie, we're we're gonna uh, we're gonna start to wrap up. Obviously, you know, we've been going for quite a while now. It's been absolutely incredible. But I want to ask you, what do you think about the direction of Australian footballers in Socceroos and also A League? Do you feel like we're in the right direction? Because obviously, we're in a little bit of a, a stagnant point right now. Well, I, I I don't know if you guys have seen it. They've put a team together of uh, old um, Socceroos or uh, all these footballers that have had. You know, careers, they've formed a panel with the FFA to kind of see, figure out what's, you know, what's wrong with Australian football, you know, and, and Mark Bosnich and all these guys, Frank Farina, uh, I think even Mark Laduca, all these guys are obviously uh, huge names and, and they're, they're part of the FFA now and uh, they're on this board. Um, but I, I don't know, I, I want to see change. I, I, I want, hopefully, they can implement change and not just talk about it because I feel like at the moment we just talk. I know what's wrong. We all know what's wrong with. We all know. Football. Yeah. <laughs> we all know. Like it's, it's you know you don't you don't need to be a bloody uh, a uh, what is it? Um, uh, uh, what's that scientist. word? I'm, rocket science. Rocket science. <laughs> uh, some rocket scientists to know that you know what's wrong with Australian football. I mean, there's just not, not enough opportunities, not enough team, not enough money. Um, Kids are playing shitload too much at grassroots level. 
Um, and uh, and, we're, and we're, we're stopping the old, I know that the AIS was a, um, and had a big football department that um, helped a lot of us develop all the talent of Australian players um, to go overseas. We saw, you know, with um, Mark Paduka, Josip Skoko, um, all, Joe Simonich, all these guys, Brett Emerton, all these guys have been through the... That. And, uh, but man, it's, it's money, it's, um, it's egos, it's, it's all these federations that say that my dick's bigger than yours. <laughs> and, uh, and that's and that's a problem, man. That's a problem yeah. with, with Australian football. We there's too many egos, um, and we just got to unite, man. We got to just clean it up. And, and now's the time, bro. Now's the would time. you would you argue that we should uh, go in a, a a different direction to the MLS or a similar direction to the MLS? Because the MLS is obviously something that is doing well with what they've mm. done, and we mm. aren't doing well with what we're doing. So do you feel like we should go in that direction with all the players from like Europe, or do you feel like we should? Really focus on the young. Well, it's well, definitely young. It's definitely the young, and uh, you know, I think of the old NSL. We had eighteen clubs, um, and there was so much opportunity for young players. Uh, at the moment, we've got bloody what ten A League teams, and only limited spots. And even then, um, most clubs are buying more experienced or overseas players because they want to win something, or and and maybe go to Asian Champions League, but not actually really developing developing young kids. And uh, and that's the issue. There's just not enough, um, no pathways. Uh, we're just kind of losing them, and uh, and there's there's no opportunities. And uh, but you know it, it's it's hard. I, I've got to admit it's hard. Um, I've seen the way that the A League's been run over the last few years, or well, the the way that it's kind of plateaued or even starting to drop. Um, and and it, because I feel like that when we when this A League started, it was amazing. Football was yeah. well, attracting good players, and um, the football like okay, was 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 I thought it was Even good. Maybe five six years ago, it was starting to look up as well. Yeah, yeah, but then we kind of rest and, and think, okay, this is great, and, and we don't want to evolve. We just think that everything is going to be smooth. I know with old NSL, everyone was just happy to keep it going like it was. Um, but with anything, you got to evolve with the times and try to grow and, and expand and, and and do things differently and. I feel like with the guy that's in there at the moment um, at the top of FFA uh, yeah. is already thinking outside the box, uh, and and he's a football mind. He's uh, he, he knows uh, he's a football footballer. He, he's played football. He knows football. He, he's gone. He's he's done his stuff with FFA, uh, the FIFA. So he knows exactly what he what needs to turn around. Hopefully, these people that come onto this panel have a bit more a lot of input, but then they actually do something. I'm begging you, can you please do a training camp with the Central Coast Mariners and teach them how to play <laughs> A-League football? Uh, no one man. wants to work with the Central Coast Mariners, mate. No one wants to work with the Central Coast Mariners. <laughs> Even I'm not good enough to help that, man. I have to, I have to uh, say with Central Coast Mariners, man, it's, the fact is that uh, um, when your own is not putting money in or trying to... Um, you know, I feel like they've been a lot of the players that go there or are there. I feel like they they haven't got the same sort of infrastructure or, or or money or even facilities like they do at the you know at the top or like the the more elite I suppose in the A League. And when your owner doesn't want to put money in and it's going bare bones the whole time, and you're struggling to have a physio go away with you on um, you know. Interstate for a game, and you're struggling to have masseuses, and you're supposed to be an elite, and you're supposed to be professional. Um, it's hard, and I feel sorry for those guys. I mean, but if if anything, I, I like that Central Coast at least give young kids the opportunity, which uh, um, for me is is something big. As a Brisbane Royal fan, we were down two 0 in the grand final. We came back two two and won the grand final. Oh. So I'm happy, you know. Oh, oh man, <laughs> well, Brisbane, Brisbane actually looked good, man. I really yeah. enjoy watching the way Brisbane play. And I'm a massive fan of Robert Bell, mm. so... Um, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, awesome. But, uh, awesome. but Archie, before we, uh, before we jump off, what's your, what's your passions outside of the game? Obviously, you, uh, you said you have passions outside of the game that you want to show off. <laughs> what, what are they? Man, you wouldn't even believe it. It's, uh, it's actually mountain biking. <laughs> Oh, well, we I, saw the mountain biking before. There was a mountain biking. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> I, I go, I do all the like the, the downhill stuff and um, you know, like uphill and all that sort of shit, man. I, I love it. Like yeah. I've got 
<laughs> I busted myself up so many <laughs> times, man. Like, uh, just, uh, yeah, falling off or whatever. But I love it, man. It's my passion. I, I, I really enjoy it. Gets me out of the nature. Passion, mate. No, that's, that's it, man. Slogan. That's it, boys. That's it. That's it. Before you go, Arch, I wanted to ask you, you wrote a book in 2010 called uh, What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger. Was that a fulfilling yeah. moment? And is it something you'd consider doing in the future again? Uh, I'd, I'd look to probably do it differently, to be honest. I, I probably um, probably wasn't in the right kind of... When they came to me about that book, I probably wasn't like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. And I, and I probably wasn't speaking my whole truth, um, you know, when it came to, to, to the book. Um, and and the funny thing is, when it did come out, it was after a week. It was buy one get one free. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably stay off the book. <laughs> I'll stay after off all the hard work. work. And you know what the funny thing is, boys? I've actually not even read it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a ghost reader, a ghost writer, and uh, I, I said what I said, but I've actually not even read the book. What it tell you? <laughs> Uh, that's mad. That's funny, mate. But, um, oh, but you know. Archie, I want to, uh, I want to obviously give you a massive thank you for for jumping oh, on here. No, with thank us. you. We, man. We've had a great time, mate. We've had a great time and a good laugh as well. You know, we, uh, you know, we're actually quite serious a lot of the time on these podcasts. But you know, with you, we've had a really good laugh and um, and, yeah. uh, and and good chat but as well. I want to highlight one thing. I really have a lot of respect for you in regards to something you said earlier about when fans come up to you, you're happy to... We didn't say take photos, but it seemed like you're happy to take photos, have a chat. It's good to see that in sport. There's a lot of sport. I won't name drop, but there's sporting professionals who, yeah, they're taken seriously, but they'll also reject the fans. And and you're really interactive with the fans, which I I think people respect. Yeah, well, man, that's like, for me, I'm a fan anyway. Like, I'm a fan of football and I'm a fan too. And... um, it's funny enough, you, funny you say that. I actually, when I watch games back or watch highlights of games, it's not, I, I, okay, I watch a little bit of me scoring the goal, but it's more <laughs> about the reaction of the fans and what it meant for them for me to score that gives yep. me that, that kind of buzz. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's why I feel like that um, I want to try to give as much time. Okay, you know, I'm going to have a shit day and I'll probably, you know, if someone stops me and I've had a shit day, it's hard to... It's hard to come across and be happy, but man, I, for me, it was always about trying to stay humble and, and uh, look, I'm still trying to work on the ego thing. I mean, <laughs> ego is, is a big part of sport. And, um, exactly, yeah. And for, for me now, being out of it, and I realise that it, it's actually shit. And if one thing that I can say to the youngsters coming through is uh, stay humble, don't let ego get hold of you, and um, always stay grounded, man, and always give. Always good. Yeah, I, want give, I want to give that one a clap. That is, uh, yeah. that is fantastic. Good but I stuff. love it, man. Well, it's funny. I'll quickly just stop you uh, quickly and say something. But this is what I love. So, I mean, when everyone sort of DMs me and, and, you know, there's an opportunity to help where I can, I do it. I mean, this yep. guy DMs me from Queensland Football and said, oh, Arch, do you mind? I've got a couple of teams going on Facebook um, that have got all these Zoom meetings. Do you mind coming in and joining in? So I joined, yeah. I, 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 on a Saturday, I came in on a, on a Zoom meeting at one of the clubs up in Queensland, some small club, and they had all the boys there. As soon as my head popped up, I was like, shit, what the hell? So that was pretty mad. But that, that's what I love, man. It's cool. It's cool. Of course. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming on, and we really do appreciate it, and we, we wish you the best with everything in the future, mate. Okay. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Archie. And, Fantastic. And Hayden, chat obviously, big, big fella Hayden, I thank you for, for jumping on as always. No, that's all and good. All, I really enjoyed it. Nan. Looking forward to the and next also Nan. Oh, And also Nan. <laughs> and also Nan. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. And obviously, guys, that is going to do it for today. A big thanks to Archie. As we are on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. Plus, we have the video footage on YouTube, on Beach House Sport YouTube. So go and check that out. Obviously, go and check that out if you're watching it now. Well, that's fantastic on YouTube. But if you're on the iTunes and Spotify, we are also on YouTube. So do go check that out. Obviously, guys, live your passion. That is the main thing. If you're not subscribed yet, go subscribe. And we're going to jump off for today. So thanks for watching. Catch you later. Yeah.